Hey guys, welcome back to English Gentleman Game with me, Osco. Sorry it's been such a long time since I've actually done a video. Um, if you noticed my video the other day, a uh, very short upload of the Dishonored Platinum. That was one of the reasons why I've not been gaming or doing too many videos. Uh, basically, I've been doing that. And I didn't think it was particularly exciting watching me play through Dishonored again. I had to start again. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there was some, a number of the trophies I needed basically required me to play the whole game. Certainly uh, Sokolov, one called the art dealer, uh, Sokolov's paintings, you need to play through it and get them all. And there's paintings on at, le at least mission two, and I think it goes up to mission seven. There's paintings on mission six, one called the flooded district. No, sorry, that's not true. The flooded, yeah, the flooded district, but you also need to have done Granny Rag side missions in order to get to Granny Rags at the end of the flooded district in order to get the final painting. I think actually I'd probably pick them all up the first time I went through it because I remember doing the Granny Rags missions then and the location of the final painting that I collected was familiar. Anyway, I'll not talk about it, sorry. So the real reason for today's video, I wanted to do something a bit different. I'm, I've done most of the games I wanted to look at. I've still got, I mean I'm still playing through Chrono Trigger but it's not very exciting like I said in the past watching me bumble my way through a game. I don't have the instructions. I should really get a guide to be honest to save as much time as possible and see everything I can see in the game. <clears throat> well, I thought I'd look at racing games. Now I finally worked out how to easily record gameplay from things other than a Super Nintendo and a Game Boy via emulators. I found a thing called uh, Open Broadcast Software, which is actually streaming software but allows very easy screen capture and as this is recorded the same way, it's a doddle basically. So I had managed to get a Streets of Rage video up a while ago which proved difficult getting an output file from the Genesis emulator I was using that I could actually use in Premiere Pro. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry for coughing. Anyway, all that's behind me, I can record whatever I want now. As long as I can see it and play it, I can record it, so that's done enough. But, for the sake, I see the two games I'm bringing you today, Street Racer and Rock and Roll Racing, two of my favourite games on the Super Nintendo. I did play a number of racing games, I was looking through a list of popular best 16-bit racing games and most of them seem to be on the Super Nintendo anyway and there's other ones like I mean apart from Gran Turismo there's not many racing games on say the PlayStation I particularly enjoyed I did I mean there's driving games I like I mean what was it Need for Speed Most Points on the PS2 that was more driving than racing in my opinion it wasn't an evading the cops but it's still enjoyable anyway stop waffling now so Street Racer on the Super Nintendo came out after Super Mario Kart. Looks, you know, one of the first copies of Super Mario Kart. Basically, it's a kart racing game. You go around whizzy tracks and stuff. There are a few things that differentiate it. The combat is rather than pickup based and being uh, different, if you will, or a variety of different attacks and different shells and such like. This one, you just get you get side swipes, and you can also <coughs> excuse me have a special attack. Which is quite fun. You have to be quite on the ball and could slap on Frankenstein. You have to be quite on the ball to actually make it work and work effectively. But you did; they are good. Don't get me wrong. And I think it's sufficiently different from Mario's combat to make it interesting. The battle you get is the other um, thing that sets, separates this from Mario Kart in as much as it's four players rather than just two. I'm not sure how they did it, but I have played this with four players and. It works fine. And I have to say, unless you're on a really big telly, it's actually quite hard to see what's going on. I mean, obviously the picture fidelity is not great because it's a 16-bit console, pushing quite hard to be frank. But it's good fun. It does work. It's, there's no slowdown. It's just the quality is not, picture quality is not great. But it does work. The battle mode I like. It's, really, it's a bit similar to. I mean, that's again a bit of a blatant ripoff to be honest. Of Mario Kart that you just kind of drive around to one of you's not out. But instead of popping balloons, you just you have a health bar. I mean, I think this is, you know, the, the way the Street Racer bit is written is quite a blatant ripoff of Street Fighter 2. So it kind of, the energy bar you've got on the KO and everything, I think it's a not so subtle ripoff of Street Fighter 2 and Mario Kart. I mean, why Capcom have never made a kart game is beyond me because they've done most other things. Anyway, that's another story. I like this game. It's not a massively different to Mario Kart, so if you love Mario Kart, it's definitely worth a go. I just liked it. I, I don't. I was never a particular fan of Mario Kart, and I never finished it. It was too difficult for me. I did manage to finish this though, way back when. Although I long since got rid of it, the original version of this anyway, sadly. 
But I do enjoy it. If you can, if you have a Super Nintendo or one of the various emulating devices, I do suggest you pick this up. It's quite good fun. If you can get four of you around, even more so. It's not a massive difference to Mario Kart, like I say. I can't really put my finger on exactly why I like this more than Mario Kart. I just do. I think. Yeah, I think it's because, for the most part, it doesn't rely on the annoying tricks that Mario Kart does to try and even up the racing. Like you, can, you don't get. If you're in the lead by, if you are in the lead by a long way, you're not going to get smacked by anything. They have to be next to you or right behind you to damage your health. Whereas in Super Mario, you can be at the front by a fucking half a lap and you'll still get walloped. But I like this game anyway. So that's one of the. And the other one I wanted to touch base on is Rock and Roll Racing. Now, Rock and Roll Racing, from Interplay, it was from, from memory, were high up on the pecking order of decent developers back in the day. I, 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 can't, I can't say it's the best isometric whatever type racer. I mean, I look from memory, I've played this one. There was RC Pro-Am on the Game Boy and Iron Man Stewart, which were on Nintendo, but I might have made it on the PC is what I played it on. I like them all, to be honest. I mean, it takes a little bit of getting used to remembering that, obviously, the steering you need to remember which way you're steering and stuff but what I liked about this one was the fact uh, this is actually quite a decent upgrade system for a game that's quite old you could obviously you can pretty much upgrade everything your tyres, your suspension, your engine, you can buy weapons you can blow each other off the track I just thought it was great, you can buy nitrous boosts I mean it had a bit of a wink to Iron Man Stewart I remember you could buy boosts and stuff but the other thing that makes this, more, this game notable not necessarily the graphics, the graphics are uh, arguably, what's the word, serviceable. The soundtrack was what made it stand out. I mean, I'm surprised I never got in trouble for this because he basically ripped off a lot of famous um, metal, you know, rock and heavy metal tunes. I mean, to our benefit, I think it's a fantastic sounding game. And to be honest, sometimes in a game, in a racing game, particularly when you've got a very good car and you're in the front by miles, it's actually quite dull driving around on your own. There's no competition. <coughs> Excuse me. In this game, because of the music, it never was boring. And virtually everyone I've ever spoken to in real life or on the internet, or whatever, has got the fondest of memories of this game. So this is another game that's definitely, definitely worth picking up. And it's one of the better examples of a racing game, in my opinion, on the Super Nintendo. These are they. This is a, a square track. Well, obviously the easiest one there is on the game. They do get devilishly hard later on. Uh, you do need the boosters because you do slow down if you hit the side, which I do quite a lot in this uh, this video. You do need to improve your engine. You get money awarded for winning or second place or whatever. You pick up various bits of cash lying around. And unlike, you know, Street Racer doesn't have this and Mario Kart doesn't have this. From, it has the upgrade system which, you know, you prioritise what you need. And I'll be honest, I usually go for the engine first because being fast in the straight line is usually more important. Certainly in the beginning. And you can rack up the easy wins, and then you can start buying the suspension and the tyres and such like, and the weapon. The weapons are good fun on this as well. Definitely have a good time blowing opponents off the track in this game. I can't remember if you get a monetary award for however many people you shoot, but it's definitely a cracking game, this one. There's other games I want to have a look at. Outrun, obviously a Sega game. There was one on the PC Engine that some guy recommended. It kind of looked like F1. F1 Twin, F1 Twin Track or something. On the Turbo Graphics, uh, I've seen a video of it on YouTube. I haven't actually got my hands on a PC Engine or Turbo Graphics emulator, so I'll have to dip root that one out. Um, that's about it, really. Trying to think of any other Sega-based, Sega-specific uh, racing games. No, just that one. There's a few other games. I mean, I've done F Zero. Uh, I've played on board a Mario Kart. I'm, to be honest, I think I had Mario Kart for about a month and got rid of it because I just didn't like it. It just pissed me off that much. I certainly got more enjoyment out of playing this and Street Racer than I ever did out of Super Mario Kart. But actually, I definitely think I'm in a minority on that one because I think a lot of people have rose-tinted glasses about Mario Kart. That's just my opinion. So, just to let you know, I haven't forgotten about the retro games. I want to have a look at the racing games first because I think it's a genre that I've kind of neglected. In the past, I tended to get fighting games and platformer games when I actually owned it. Well, when I was playing the Super Nintendo a lot. Um, I did have Secret of Mana, but that's not the only RPG. It's like saying Super Mario World is the only, RP uh, only platform game. Definitely the best platform game, but it's not the only one. I never really played Yoshi's Island, which to my shame, so that's something I should look at. But again, 
how it mocks you or how exciting you guys would find it if I sit there and just play Super, through Super Mario World 2 or Yoshi's Island, whatever it's called. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, hope you have a good weekend. Take it easy, and I'll catch up with you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.